Forgive us as we forgive others. Becoming true owners of the Spirit of the Lord, not blind servants of the Lord. All right, low blood pressure, less stress, less anxiety, stronger immune system, chronic pain relief, improved heart health, better sleep, low inflammation. What do all of these have in common? Forgiveness. That's right. Studies have shown that those who practice forgiveness score much better in all of these health parameters, while those who do not practice a life of forgiveness score much worse in each of these health parameters. Imagine, therefore, the impact of forgiveness on your spiritual life and your spiritual health. Brothers and sisters, next week we will participate in a wonderful Holy Wine Grace Ceremony. That's right, True Mother is extending Heavenly Parents' grace to all of us, and we will participate next Sunday. True Parents make incredible conditions interceding on our behalf in order for us to be able to receive this grace that washes away all of the shadows of our past. And this is truly incredible. We are truly blessed. So in order to receive this grace, I believe we should create an environment that is truly worthy to receive this grace. Don't you think so? I think we should prepare to create a true culture of heart and a true culture of forgiveness within our own hearts, within our families, and within our community. So let's reflect. As individuals, are we people who can forgive ourselves? Are we people who can forgive others? And as a community, have we created a culture of heart? Have we created a culture of forgiveness in our community? This is my question. I believe that we can do better. And I believe that our challenge lies with our understanding of the law. Specifically, understanding the difference between the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Let's reflect on this and ask our Heavenly Parent to forgive us as we forgive others. Okay, so forgive us. Forgive us presupposes that we are willing to forgive ourselves. Before we can come to the altar and ask Heavenly Parent for forgiveness, we actually need to be willing to look at our mistake, to be humble to ourselves, to be humble in front of the mirror and say, okay, I've made a mistake, I need help, I want to do better, I'm willing to forgive myself. You, you kind of need to go through this process before you can even ask for forgiveness. Forgiving others Forgiving others is actually linked to the first because how can we truly, humbly stand before God and ask for forgiveness if we are not willing to forgive our brothers and sisters around us? So, how can we better understand the difference between the letter of the law and the spirit of the law? This is my question that I want to unpack, so pay attention. True Father said that love transcends the law. He said the heart is the only thing that can transcend the law. So when you become one with the heart of God, you can go beyond the law. 
That's to say, when you become an owner of the Spirit, you don't need to act as a blind follower of the law. You are one with it because you are one with the purpose of it. Father's explaining this. When you become one with the heart of God, you transcend the law. When you become one with the heart of God, you go beyond the law. That's to say that the law is here to protect us, to guide us, not to suppress us. Love transcends the law. Can you reflect for a moment on how deep this statement truly is? What did True Mother say? After Father passed, Mother said she wants to go back to the early days, back to the culture of the early church when we led with both the spirit and truth. What does she mean? She's talking about a time when these two things were in balance. In the proper position. For what good is the truth without spirit? What good is the law without love? To illustrate this, I want to share a couple of stories from the Bible. The first one, have you heard of the story, plucking grain on the Sabbath? In this story, Jesus and his disciples are walking through a grain field on the Sabbath. This is the day of rest. And as they're walking through the grain field, they begin to pluck from the heads of the grain and eat them. Seeing this, the Pharisees shout out to them, scolding them and accusing them. You shouldn't be eating the grain on the Sabbath like this. You're breaking the law. And Jesus answers, saying, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. You see, this is the same meaning that Father explained. When you are one, with the love of God, when you are one with the Spirit of God, when you are truly an owner of the Spirit of the law, you transcend the law. Man was not made for the law. Man was made for love. That means that the Sabbath was made for humanity to find their way back home. Humanity was not made for the Sabbath. Do you understand? Jesus was saying that traditional practices are there to support us, but they should not be used as weapons to oppress us or to burden others. So why then did the Pharisees judge Jesus? Did they not know this? I believe they judged Jesus because they were insecure. Why were they insecure? Because they were not owners of the Spirit. They were just blind servants of the law. They were not owners of the Spirit of the law. They did not understand the true purpose of the law. They were blindly following the letter of the law. They did not understand the Spirit of the law, even though they practiced these rituals Religiously. Can you think of times when you have acted like the Pharisees? Have we ever acted in this way? 
When we practice the law according to the law, we do not practice the law according to love. Therefore, we feel insecure, actually. And we take comfort in judging others. We feel insecure. Something's not right. And so we can find comfort in judging others and comparing others' ability to follow the letter of the law according to our practice of following the letter of the law. But those who practice the spirit of the law do not feel that discomfort and do not feel the need to judge others. Even when they can see that they may be making mistakes, they would be moved instead to help them, to welcome them, to guide them back home lovingly. This is the difference. The Pharisees in this story were not owners of the spirit of the law. Instead, they were blind servants of the law and judged others with it. That means they never experienced it. Here's the second story that I want to share that illustrates this point. You must have heard the story of the prodigal son. In this parable, Jesus is telling the story of two brothers and their father, who is wealthy. The elder brother, the elder son, is a good boy who follows all of the rules and obeys his father's commands. But the younger son is different. He asks his father for his inheritance money early. And then he leaves home and spends all of his money, squandering all of his inheritance away on a wild lifestyle. But finally, he reaches the end. He reaches a miserable state where he is left to eat the food of pigs in order to survive. And in this state, he realizes his mistakes. He realizes the errors of his ways. And he wants to return home. He wants to return home with a heart of repentance, willing to be a servant in his father's estate. But as he arrives, his father welcomes him back with open arms and throws a feast to celebrate his return. The father says, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. However, the elder brother becomes jealous of this. And he questions his father, saying, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him? The father responds to the elder son, saying, My son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Why is Jesus telling this story? What can we learn from this? We can learn a lot. First, unconditional love. This parable emphasizes heavenly parents' forgiveness for us, unconditional love for us. If we're willing to come home, no matter how far we have strayed, if we're willing to come home with a humble heart of repentance, heavenly parent has endless embrace of love and forgiveness for us. This is incredible. Secondly, repentance. The younger son, the younger brother, did make mistakes, serious mistakes, but he made himself humble. He was willing to pay whatever price. He was sorry. He was willing to ask 
his father's forgiveness, which means he was willing to forgive himself also. Thirdly, we see that the elder brother acted much like the Pharisees in the other story. He was following the laws, but he was not experiencing the spirit of the law. He was doing everything he, his father said, but he wasn't truly one with his father's heart. He probably found it hard to forgive others. He probably found it hard to forgive himself. And therefore, I'm sure it was hard for the elder brother to be humble. It was hard, I'm sure, for the elder brother to experience true humility and repentance. But finally, I want you to learn from this story something even deeper. Did you notice how the father responded to the elder son when he was complaining? The father was actually surprised by his son's reaction. He said, everything I have is yours. So what does this mean? Everything I have is yours. The father was shocked by his son's jealousy. The father thought that he and his son were one. That is to say that the elder son could have at any time held his own feast, held a feast with the fattened calf or two fattened calves and invited his friends to enjoy a celebration together. He could have even put on the celebration for his father any time as an owner, but he did not do so. Somehow, perhaps, he was waiting for his father to recognize him. Do you understand? He was following the law, but he was not an owner of the spirit of the law. He did not understand the purpose of the law. He did not understand the purpose of his father's intent. He was not actually one with his father's intent. If he was, if the elder brother was one with his father, then perhaps he would have welcomed his younger brother home, not waited for the father to call the feast. Maybe the elder brother should have called the feast. What do you think if the elder brother should have called the feast? Would the father have complained? No, maybe the elder brother also had the divine right as one with his father to welcome his brother home and to forgive him. Maybe the elder brother, if he was one with his father, could have called to the servants to to bring the robe to the younger brother, to bring the ring to the other younger brother, to bring the sandals and to kill the fattened calf and call the feast to celebration. But he did not do so. Why? Because he was not one with his father's heart. He was not one with the spirit of the law. He was merely following the rules externally, following the religious practices externally, doing what he thought he had to do to be good, to be counted in heaven, but in fact, he will not be counted there because he was not one with the purpose of it. He was not one with the spirit of it. This is the meaning of this story. He was not the owner. He was blindly following. So brothers and sisters, we have to decide which kind of people will we be. We should be people who are humble in front of God, humble to ask for forgiveness, knowing that that requires our own self-humility and self-forgiveness and the forgiveness of others. In this light, let us be owners of the Spirit, not blind servants of the law. Owners of the Spirit of the law, not blind servants of the law. And with this heart, let us get ready to welcome our members home, to welcome our brothers and sisters home. Don't wait for me to call it. Don't wait for your leaders to call it. You call it. Make your celebrations. Kill the fattened calves. Boil the rice. Cut down the fruits. And prepare your environment to receive this grace starting from next week. Starting from next week, we will initiate a 40-day campaign from March 26 to May 5, that day that Mother has earmarked to open the new era, that day that Mother has earmarked to reveal the heavenly sanctum, that day that Mother has earmarked to oh, go into the new era as clean and pure people of a pure community, one that is living the culture of heart, one that is living 
culture of forgiveness. For if we cannot create that culture, then who are we to ask for grace? Who are we to say that we have grace? No, we ourselves first must create that environment. Let's have that kind of spirit as children, confident that we have the authority to do so, just like the elder brother should have done so when his father welcomed the younger son home. Heavenly Parent, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Let us become true owners of the Spirit of the Lord. Forgive us, God, as we forgive others. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Have a great week.